Thank you to, for coming to Angular Material in Practice. Before I start talking about Angular Material and deliver some exciting news, I'm curious, how many here have, are actually using Angular Material right now? Okay, maybe 20, keep your hands up if you would. So I'm seeing 30%, how many of you have, keep your hands up, how many of you have heard of Angular Material? Okay, about 80%, that's great. So we have some exciting news. I won't be diving into deep about what Angular Material is. There's some assumptions because of the time that you know that, but we'll give a little bit of background on that, all right? So the Google design team had a visionary idea called Material Design. And Material Design is a visual language focused on a user experience across multiple platforms and device sizes. And this specification includes details for UI components, theming, layout, et cetera. And Angular Material is a pure Angular implementation of material design. So we've provided UI components, a Flexbox grid layout system, theming, and much more. And Angular Material is a Google open-sourced project that makes creating web applications fun. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be on, yes, I apologize. So we have our full source code online at github.com, and we have our live docs also online, and you can see the URLs in these slides. In fact, our live docs are using all of our components in our layout system, so we even eat our own dog food. And we have some exciting real world applications that we're gonna give some previews to also later on in this talk. So before I talk about where we are today, let's first talk, have a quick history review of where we came from. That will sort of establish the context. Before the public release of material design, Naomi and Brad had recognized that the Angular community needed a reference implementation for the material design specifications. They needed a UI UX framework. This was, in my mind, a little bit visionary, and it's been amazing, the growth and the, and the challenges, we not just challenges, but the results we've had. So in May of 2014, they collaborated with Max Lynch, Adam Bradley, and the developers of the Ionic team to form the Angular Material developer team. And this is where I joined Angular Material. Five months after we started, Max and I gave a first look on Angular Material at NG Europe in Paris. We introduced the vision for the project and some of our first components, and we asked the community for help and feedback. You can see the full video of this presentation on YouTube, and the slide contains a link to that. Then in March of 2015, Naomi and I demonstrated how to quickly build an Angular Material application from scratch using our layout Flexbox system and our Angular Material components. This is where we had sort of a dive deep and looked at the source code and actually used and built that with a with an editor and, and ran it in the browser. So I won't cover that again. The video for this presentation is also available online and is still very relevant to the work that we've got going on now and in the future. So go take a look. Now I'm here in London representing the Angular Material team. So the question becomes, what am I gonna show and talk about today? So we're proud to say that today we have our first release candidate for 1.0. That's all right, that's awesome, isn't it? What this means is you can rely on our current release of Angular Material Components and our APIs. If we break things, then of course that's a bug. But we're ready for some confirmation that we've got it right. We still have some polish to do, a little tweaking to do, but we feel confident we're very close and we need your help to, to confirm that. So let's, let's talk about what I mean by confirmation and a little validation of this whole release. So what do, what do I mean by validating and comp confirming 1.0? Well, components are not useful in isolation, right? You need to use them together. You need to use them in, a wet, in an application. So to validate our release, we first need to know that our components work well together in real-world applications. And we wanted to be sure that they were easy to use and they worked as expected. And they also could be used in adaptive layouts. This is another thing that's very, very important. Because if you think about an application, we not only have our, our Angular Material components, but we have data services, we have logic, we have choreographed animations, which you've seen with ng-animate and a whole bunch of other things going on with Matthias and Rob Messerly. 
We also have something that you guys may not have heard about, but is gonna become a very, very important as we move forward with web apps, and they just are adaptive layouts. So what are adaptive layouts? Adaptive layouts are part of the material design specification. These identify how components should transform themselves across different devices and different device sizes and even different orientations. And this transformation means maybe laying them out differently or even perhaps using different components. So we've all seen and heard about responsive design, but adaptive layouts extends that even further. You can read all about the specifications for adaptive layouts online at the material design site, and there's a link there for that. Google's design team is also developing a very interesting tool to help developers test and preview adaptive layouts. While the tool is still in pre-release, it's gonna be invaluable for application developers to create and test their own layouts for their own applications. So let's take a look at this tool to explore adaptive layouts within Angular Material. So as a test of our release candidate, by the way, we put out a call for some developers at Google we wanted developers to build Angular applications with some adaptive layouts. And these layouts had already been specified by the design team, so we had sort of some templates to work from. Their efforts would not only help us confirm that our release candidate is spot on and is, is targeted as we want, but it would also help us identify any other features and, and functionality that we need to tweak or that might be missing, or maybe even just not done as we want. Ideally, what we want is we want all this, these tools to make your world and your work easier and more productive. So they used their 20% time and only a few weeks of work to create some amazing results. This was really a fun effort, and we plan to release the source code to these applications soon, and the material design team also has thoughts on how they're gonna release the, the, pre, the, the adaptive layout tool for you for public use. So I should preface that this is all still work in progress, but let's just take a step out of the slides for a moment and explore this. Do we, all right. All right. This is gonna be a bit of a challenge because I don't have it on my screen. All right, so this is the view from the layout preview tool. And you can see, if you look up here at the top, like I said, pretty interesting challenge. So we have the multiple devices all sort of overlaid with each other. And you can see we're actually loading the material design docs live. And it's being loaded in a desktop type of view, a tablet view, and a mobile type of view. And in fact, what's happening is we're looking at the white frame demo that's running live, right? But notice that in the desktop view, our padding is different, our font sizes are different, our layout is different, our colors are different. So you can, with one view, very quickly look at how your applications adapt different sizes. Let's take a look, another one. Here's one of one of the samples I had just mentioned where we have sort of a, a simulated e-commerce type of thing. And if I can click on this here, there we go. So it, it actually is interactive. It, it's your full application running within this sort of a little shell for that particular browser. And if your application is using adaptive layouts and res being responsive correct, correctly, then you're gonna have, see the effects and the responses you want. And Angular Material allows you to do that very easily. At least that is our goal. Here's another one. So again, these are still works in progress, and the source code to these will be released. These are all being developed right now with ES6 and JSPM, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Let's go back to the slides here. How do I go to full screen mode? Let's see here. That wasn't what I wanted. Um, 
I can't see it. Hit what's that? Come up. Josh is going to help me because I'm technology challenged when it's not right in front of me. Thank you, Josh. No, that won't work. No, because I lost my notes. So don't do this. All right, so here we go. So what about the future? Where are we going with angular material as we start talking about angular material too? Well, some of you may already be using ECMAScript 6 and TypeScript to develop your applications. And in fact, you can use those same technologies to develop Angular those same applications with Angular Material 1. Now, this is really beneficial because it sets a bridge. Yes, okay, you're seeing the same thing I am. It sets a bridge between using Angular 2 and using Angular Material 1 as we prepare for release in the, near, in the future for Angular Material 2. Now, Jeremy wanted me to remove his picture here on this, but I think his smile's pretty awesome, as well as the man himself. And Jeremy's been working very hard at, not only on Angular Material 1, but also on taking some first looks at creating our Angular Material 2 components to be used with Angular 2. This is still a work in progress, and we have some lessons we need to still learn and remove some of our, our best practices and definitions and our style guides from it. what we've learned in Angular Material 1, we'll move that over to our Angular Material 2 implementations. But you can see this already online if you want to take a preview. So when is 1.0 done? Well, 1.0 is done really when you help us confirm that we've got it right, that our APIs and our core functionality work as we expect and as you expect. But before I talk about any more details on that, I wanted to step back and introduce the core team. Uh, obviously, we see the, the visionary leadership that we've had from Brad Green and Naomi, and they're just quite awesome to work for. And then we have an amazing set of developers as part of the team. Yet you can see that the core team is not that large. So we've had some amazing progress and fantastic results with a small team to deliver to you the release candidate. Angular Material 1 will include over 20 components. Some of those may be new to you right now. We have now have recently released the menu and the menu bar component, the date picker and the select component. We've added improvements to our layout flex box, our grid system. We've added significant improvement today to, or excuse me, so I have, maybe I haven't announced, but today we've actually released the release candidate. So it's available up on the CDN. It's tagged, it's ready for you to start using. We have mobile performance improvements. So we have sidestepped the 350 second millisecond delay on taps. So you're gonna find that on mobile, Angular Material apps are gonna respond a lot, lot faster. And we're gonna continue our work for cross-browser support. So what's next? Well, as we plan for the future with Angular Material 1, we're gonna have, we're gonna maintain consistent releases and of course, our velocity will slow a little bit as we also start focusing on Angular Material 2. But we'll continue to add more components and more features. And we'll start focusing more and more on getting you, as soon as possible, an Angular Material 2 implementation. I would be remiss if I didn't talk about our community. You can help. We welcome new contributors. <clears throat> In fact, I've highlighted Elad and Topher because these were contributors from the community that were just volunteering their time. And they were so amazing that we actually invited them to join the team. And Elad works from Israel, and Topher works from Texas. So we have a very distributed team, and we're very passionate about getting contributors and the community involved with our efforts. Lastly, I would like to thank some of our top contributors that we have had who've provided bug reports, issues, pull requests, and helped us make Angular Material what it is today. Of course, some of them at the top is Matthias, who everyone knows from NG Animate. 
while he's using ng-animate with Angular Material, excuse me, with Angular 1, and planning for ng-animate with Angular 2, he's done an amazing job of providing support with Angular Material. And all, together, we've all helped to make the ecosystem a better place and a better set of tools. And lastly, Estvan Novak actually just published a book on ng -mater Angular Material, and it's available for a free download while you're here at Angular Connect. So check it out. Thank you very much.